is the Super PMTV at the Royal Varuna Yacht Club for the Singer Beer OK Dinghy World Championship PC Classic sponsored by Pattaya Mail. And here standing with me is one of the founders of PC Classic, Peter Cummins. Hello. Hello, Sue. How are you? <laughs> so we are here again. Yeah, we're here again. It's been a year. It's been a year. <laughs> it's been a long year, but it's gone very quickly. Right. So what's happening this year? What is special this year? This year is special in as much as we have, as you've just mentioned, a, an OK Dinghy World Championship. And seeing that uh, I've sailed an OK Dinghy, in fact my dinghy is in this competition, not with me, I'm too old. But uh, the managing, management team allowed us to have our PC Classic as an integral part of this regatta. So it's made us international. There are nine countries here. And correctly, the number is 72. And the number on the King's second OK dinghy that he built was OK 72. That's a, that's a fact. Oh, it's very auspicious if it indeed. wasn't, I would have written it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As always. <laughs> As always. <laughs> Peter, it's also, we are also celebrating your birthday. How old are you now? 95? Um, let me leave that number 72 in, would you? <laughs> no, unfortunately, 78. 78? Yeah. Now, if I was a golfer, that would be a lousy score. Yeah. But if I was on cricket, it wouldn't be too bad. Not out. And, ha out. and handicapped. And handicapped. Well, on the golf course. Mentally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, so all these guys came from different countries, and mainly from Australia, New Zealand, Denmark. Australia, New Zealand, UK, Denmark, Sweden, Germany. Big German contingent here. Um, Who have we forgotten? Uh, one. You can look at the flags up there. Oh, yeah. Okay, nine countries. Nine countries. Yeah. Uh, it's the most successful regatta. Uh, the people who are coming here are very, very happy with the seafront, with the warmth. I mean, many are coming from minus five, yeah. minus six. It's yeah. still minus or zero in many, many of the countries, especially the UK. Um, they love the sailing here. It's the first time they've brought this kind of dinghy out to sail here. How many uh, boats are out here? On the grass now we have about 80 or 85. That's including some who are not in the regatta. What's so special about OK Dinghy? Um, designed in Denmark about 40 years ago. Uh, it's special in as much as it's a special kind of person sails it. The comparative dinghy would be a laser, which is all plastic. But these you can see are partly plastic. Some have nice wooden decks. Um, these are more, in my opinion, more difficult to sail. They're more challenging. They're a very pretty boat on the water. Because it's uh, heavier? It's heavier. It's about 10 kilos heavier than a laser. Uh, it's about the same speed. that would be about equal on the water. So why would it be more difficult? Uh, mainly because I think they're heavier. Uh, you can see the mast is right back. The boom is low. People like you and I wouldn't have a problem, but taller people have a big problem when they change tacks and this boom comes over, wow! And the booms are very expensive. And you have your own dinghy as well? Yeah, it's out here somewhere. It's being chartered. So what, what's special about your dinghy? Me! Your boat! Me! <laughs> <laughs> about the person in that boat, of course. of course. How long have you had that one? About 15 years. Well, where'd you get it? Did you From make Denmark. it oh, okay. Um, when I went to the regatta, with His Majesty over there about 15 years ago. Um, I so sailed. It was just OK 15 years ago in Hua Hin. No, maybe 20. Because uh, if that's about 15 or 20 years ago, then His Majesty would have been about what? At that point, about 16? 55. 16? Not quite 60, not quite yeah, 60. just under 60. Still sailing very well then, but he does not sail now, of course. But I was impressed because I used an OK dinghy over there. And then uh, we brought in three, one for His Majesty, one for uh, Prince Bizidit Rajani, and one for myself, from the home of the OK Dinghy in Funan Island, Denmark. Handmade. And where's the other two now? It's still in, in the palace? Still or the palace. At the palace. At, at Hua, uh, Hua Hin, yeah. Like Gangwon like Palace. Gangwon Palace, yes. Um, I'm very happy. Peter Mohotra has resurrected it. it. It died at one point. 
it was a standalone regatta and we've taken this opportunity to bring it in with an international event. It makes it much more important and uh, I think much more noticeable. So it's, the results are going to the world press, Patty Mail and the rest of us will benefit immensely from this. And it's a great bunch of people. And it's good for our club, it's good for Patia. Uh, the Eastern Seaboard puts, puts Patia into a different concept of it's a fun city, it's a family city. You see many of the kids up there, they brought their children out from where they're coming from and having a great time. And uh, we'll have more like this because it's not just the publicity, but it's everybody here is back. You should have gone to Thailand, you fools! Why did you stay here? We'll go next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that on TV and YouTube and everybody will be jealous. Who, those, who that, those that didn't come. That didn't come, yes, yes, indeed, yeah. All right, so tonight um, it's sponsored by Patty Mail. Yes. So we'll be having uh, lots of beers, lots of food, lots of a uh, roasted something. Chicken and lots of fun. Chicken or pig? Pig, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. All right, Peter, thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. It makes us very, very proud, and we are so thrilled to have you here in our town. And to just let you race the Dinghy Internationals and, and go home without tasting some of the, or experiencing some of our hometown hospitality, would be bad. And we thought we can't let that happen. We've been living here forever, I myself, in Patia for over 40 years. I'm a Thai by birth, of Indian descent, and lived in Patia for 40 years, and so has Peter Cummins. Peter Cummins has lived here longer. He's been here for about 102 years. <laughs> and I speak of none other than our beloved former Commodore, Peter Cummins. Loved by many, adored by a few, and worshipped by none. And yet again, we are all gathered here to celebrate an event 
that marks the happy occasion of this remarkable man's birthday, which was on the 27th of March, and which is commemorated this year by sailing of the 16th Patia Mail PC Classic as one of the highlights of the Singa OK Tingi World Championships. So what is so special about this fellow that warrants so much media hype? Not that it only will interest anyone, but briefly, his story in a nutshell. Peter Cummins escaped from Tasmania before they made him extinct. He walked into the United Nations one day to send a postcard to his doting mum, sitting knitting in Hobart, Tasmania, and he walked down an hour later with a job. A messenger boy, mind you. He tells me many stories about being a messenger boy and how he had to deliver letters to all these lovely ladies in the corridors of the UN. He finally left the UN employ in 1995. He does not remember that particular occasion, except that it happened to coincide with the first PC Classic. In fact, even now, he feels that a lot of people at the United Nations in Bangkok do not really know that he has actually left. He has sailed with His Majesty the King on two occasions and has written many publications on his experience, including the historic account of the Royal Maruna Yacht Club, which is a fantastic historical book that is available for you if you're interested to get one. Peter was invited by His Majesty the King to the Klai Kangwon Palace at Bohin and raced in a challenge regatta between the King's Royal Chit Ladar Yacht Squadron and the Royal Thai Navy teams from Satahit. He was the only non-Thai to take part, and based upon his close contact with His Majesty, he produced a special color supplement called Sailing with the King for the Bangkok Post, and in 1999, he wrote a book entitled King Bhumi Paul Atulia De the Great, Monarch for the Millennium, which was published by the Patia Mail on the 5th of December, 1999. Peter went on to write books about royalty, about the royal family, and the Patia Mail published a book to commemorate the 80th anniversary of, his, of Her Majesty the Queen, and he called that book, Her Majesty the Queen, Caring Mother of the Thai Nation. He was also instrumental. In those days, he could write up a storm. He wrote another book, titled His Majesty King Bumibol Adulia Date the Great, 60 Years of Righteous Rule, and the latest one to commemorate His Majesty the King's 84th birthday. Peter is a former Commodore of the Royal Maruna Yacht Club from 1979 to 1980. And in recognition of his contributions to the development of yacht racing in the Kingdom, he was awarded an honorary life membership. I'm sitting now with the assistant race officer of the Royal Varuna Yacht Club event, especially this one, Mr. Mark from Melbourne, Australia. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. So, of course, management is very important for an event like this. What went into into this? What kind? What? How much work went to it? Uh, this is not to be confused with the off-water management. What I'm talking about here is the on-water race management. So uh, I'm the assistant race officer here, working with Kevin, who's the, the race officer, and we manage all of the on-water activities. So we, uh, we do all of the race management on-water. Tell us a little 
bit about that for people who don't understand what is uh, on water management. What do you have to do? We have to ensure that the boats all start at the right place, uh, sail the right course, uh, finish at a, an appropriate finishing line uh, and uh, are given the best opportunity to have fair racing over that time in accordance with the rules. Right, so so far any, um, any obstacles, any problems? Only minor mishaps and, and nothing that we haven't been able to fix. What are these? Oh, things like uh, buoys that uh, won't anchor properly or uh, uh, race management boats that you know, perhaps aren't really fit for purpose. Uh, but we've overcome all of those obstacles and uh, we now seem to be working very well. It's going very, very smoothly. So when you say that you uh, overcome these obstacles, they are fixed offshore or you bring them in? They all have to be fixed on the water during the race. Because once the race has started, um, it can't be stopped. What well, It could be stopped if there was a real problem. In other words, if we couldn't finish them safely or we couldn't finish them properly, we might have to stop the race. Uh, but in, you know, we will try to do everything humanly possible to ensure that the boats do have a proper finish. Uh, in your past experience, what have you encountered so far that you know there's something that you can't fix on the waters and you have to bring them in? Oh, maybe if, uh, if, if motors on the, the, the boats actually stop working and therefore can't be used. Um, if the weather conditions get intolerable um, and too great for the sailors to, to cope with, if there was a whiteout, if uh, uh, there was something like that, we would have to actually stop racing, abandon it uh, and get people to shore as quickly as possible. So one of our primary objectives is, is safety and ensuring that everyone who is out on the water gets back safely. So you are normally managing all this uh, with, the, with the OK dinghy race in different countries? I have done some work with the OKs in Australia. Um, I've done a number of their state championships. I've done the Inter-Dominion Championships, which is a special event between Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I'm doing their national championships this Christmas, and I'm going to be doing the next World Championships in Melbourne in 2014. A lot of work behind. Oh, I haven't got it on today. Okay. Now forget that. I thought I was wearing the Black Rock T-shirt at Black Rock Yacht Club in Melbourne. So we invite all of the OK sailors and all of the Thai sailors who wish to sail in OK at the next World Championships to come to Melbourne in Christmas 2014 for the next Worlds. So when you say Christmas, when do, when do they have to be the exact dates? Um, racing, uh, I think uh, management, uh, registration starts on the 27th of December 2014. And I think racing finishes on about the 6th or 7th of January. And where, 15. Where can it, they find more information about this? They can get that from the International OK Dinghy Association or from the website. Google 2014 OK Worlds. All right. So look it up and get ready for next year. And who knows? Maybe I'll see you there. I look forward to it and I hope you come. It'll be great. All right, all the sailors are up on the ground now, and we're going to be talking to some of them. And this is Paul from New Zealand. Hi, yeah, no, we've had a, had a good day, and I've had some more consistent results. I'm now in fourth place, which I'm pretty happy about, and this is such a great place to sail. The, the breeze has been, you know, way nicer than what I expected. Looking at looking at the stats, we thought I thought we might get some light, shifty stuff, but we've got brilliant, nice breezes and beautiful temperatures, and it's been fantastic racing out there and really good fun. This is Rob from New Zealand. Yeah, I had a great day today. It was a bit of an event to get off, off the shore, but once we were out racing, it was beautiful conditions again and uh, really enjoyable. A bit light towards the end of the day, but uh, great racing, and I'm pretty happy. I'm sitting in 23rd overall. We have Jake from New Zealand. Today it's, uh, it's been pretty good, good conditions, uh, and it's good competition too, but quite windy for me because I'm quite a lightweight, so... It's all right, yeah. Um, great facilities, though. I love this place. The wind's strong, constant, waves are big, good fun off the wind. It's great so far, yeah. Enjoying myself. Another Kiwi, of course, Luke from New Zealand. Well, another good day's yachting. Lovely warm water again. Great yachting. Yeah. Any mishaps? Any uh, minor... Yeah, the rudder nearly came off the back of my boat today. The gudgeon came undone, so I had to... 
let's ground around for some tools out on the water and put it, bolted it all back up and managed to do the second race. So it was quite good. <laughs> and we have Jake from Australia. Oh, it's pretty good out there. Brin's pretty good, but uh, yeah, had a bit of first race, had a few restarts. Uh, been going pretty good. Uh, I'm currently a junior, so I'm second, just a few points behind. Should be pretty good. I like it. It's going well. And of course we want to hear about the tides and the water and the movements and all that. And Stephen from Denmark will talk about that. Uh, one thing here which has been quite challenging uh, compared to other regattas around the world is uh, the tight current which is running with a speed of around two knots. These boats are sailing uh, upwind with a boat speed of five knots. So that means it's, it has a lot of influence in, in how to put your strategy in, uh, in how to deal with the race. So uh, this has been a big challenge for us here. Uh, find out how the water, the current is moving compared to where the course is. And it has been very hard uh, when the current has been moving against us. That means that we are sailing in longer time uh, against the wind, which is very hard, physically very, very hard. So uh, this uh, has been a very challenging uh, regatta until now. Physically very challenging regatta. All right, I'm standing now with the event manager of OK Dinghy Association Thailand, Kun Rut. Sawadika. Sawadika. I'm a Thai. Thai. We can tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so Kun Rut, to, to organize something like this needs a lot of preparation. So what, what goes into this? Okay, let me tell you since the beginning. Uh, three years ago, I went to New Zealand, in Wellington, as a chairman of, of the jury of this event. Because the OK World just change the venue every year. So three years ago, I, I, I went to Wellington uh, and then I met uh, the president of the OK Dinky. And he told me that once he was on the Thai Airway International and saw our king on his uh, OK Dinky, that, that, that created his idea to have somewhere, some, somewhere some, sometime that this event must be in Thailand. So he emailed me and we talked and we agreed that okay we will do it in March of 2013. So it came up with this event. And then uh, after that we just uh, 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 communicate by email how to set up, you know, how to the venue. And about a year ago he came here to visit our club to have a look whether is this club is suitable to have an event. And he said it's perfect starting from there. So, so we just continue uh, uh, email and pep and all the preparation here and, and come up until this day. Yes. It's amazing because uh, they, were, they were inspired by His Majesty the King with the OK Dinghy, but it started in New Zealand, not in Thailand. Not in Thailand at all. Okay. And, and he, he said that okay, this is the, uh, uh, the world, I mean the country of OK Dinghy. But actually, the king said OK Dinghy a long, long time ago. And right now he's uh, quite old. And I don't think he, he can sell OK Dinky anymore. OK, yes. It would be a very good, um, how would you call it, contrib contribute or, yes. or a com just, just a commemorate like, for His Majesty the King? Exactly. That, that's what he would like this event to be, to, to uh, honor our king, who once was an uh, OK Dinky sailor. Yes. All right, so uh, how big is this job to organize it here? Well, it's not, not that big at all because I have all the help from here. Uh, I, I, uh, when, when, when we agree with Andre that we're going to do it here, so I uh, email or uh, propose to Varuna that uh, OK Dinky Association would like to have a world event here. Uh, are you OK with that? And, he, then they, and the committee agree. And after that, we set up a committee, a small one about three or four or five people and we get together uh, about uh, two or three months at a time and then to uh, uh, little by little form uh, event uh, procedure what is a date what is a, what we need to be on the water of the water and it's come until today this is uh, it's a quite a successful okay are you a sailor yourself yeah i am a, i'm a sailor but i'm, I'm a laser sailor not a credit kit sailor still sail? I'm still sail, yes. Ma'am. Anything else you'd like to tell our viewers? Well, okay, uh, I think that over here, uh, Pattaya is, is uh, one of the best locations uh, to set up, to set uh, a world championship. 
I am a, I'm a jury. I am an international jury. So I, I, uh, I travel many, many places, many, many uh, uh, clubs, many, many marina. We have one of the best right here. So we, we should be proud and try to promote our sailing in Thailand. Yes. I haven't heard a single complaint about this place, about sailing from here. You know, everybody just loved it. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Okay. And hope you have a good time over here as well. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. You know what? The Paria Mail team is also here. The chief editor of Paria Mail, the editor, and all the three of them, they are very, very shy. They don't want to be in front of the camera, but we are sneaking this in. All right, I'm sitting with uh, Peter from Germany. He is part of the Germany team, but he himself lives in New Zealand. So how is this going? Not quite well. Um, New Zealand is good for, for doing a lot of training, but I'm still a German national, so I'm still sailing for Germany here and really enjoy the conditions here with uh, nice warm water and uh, quite a lot of wind, and it's really good. Do you do a lot of sailing in uh, New Zealand? Uh, I try to train every weekend, yes. What about Germany? Uh, I used to uh, do a lot of training in Germany as well, yes. How do you do it? Um, on the Baltic, on the Baltic Sea, so I'm from Hamburg, so it's mainly sea sailing on the Baltic. So tell us the difference of sailing in, in Germany, in New Zealand and Thailand. Um, I would say Germany and New Zealand is not even that different. Um, condition wise is very similar uh, here the big difference is the temperatures you really have to get used to that the water is so warm and so on um, wind wise we were very positively surprised we all expected a lot less wind um, but this week so far has been fantastic so it was yeah really really nice sailing here and you're an amateur sail sailor yes yeah yeah I think everybody who is here is actually paying his own way to get here and so on, so we are all pure amateurs. This is Henak from Germany, and actually before he started to come and sail here, he was uh, bicycling from Hat Yai up to Pattaya, right? Yes, that's right. We started three weeks earlier than the event, and yeah, we had to fight a lot with the heat, so we started at six in the morning, but finished also at 12 o'clock in the evening, in the, at noon. Yeah, and it is my first time in Asia, so we thought Thailand would be a good place to start because it's very uh, easy passes to travel, lots of hotels. Thailand would be a good place for you to have the climate shock. Yeah, we actually at home is snow, still snow. Oh. Still in the minus. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so it took you about three weeks to... Uh, to ride your bike up from Hat Yai to here. Yeah, we did it slowly and visited one island also. So it was more vacation trip. But actually, your main purpose of coming is for the, the sailing. Yes, but anyway, it's a long distance to travel and an expensive trip. So we took that as, as a motivation, but uh, combined it with, with cycling. So are you more of a sailor or, of, or a biker? Uh, that I always faces sometimes i'm more in cycling also race cycling and for the last five years i didn't sail at all so i just came here for a new start, new start. so how did you do today uh, actually i stayed at onshore <laughs> i was just too that's tired. the best place that's the best place to be is to be onshore yeah yeah of course everybody's coming back with all the sunburns and everything and you're here relaxing with beer in your hand. <laughs> we really enjoyed the trip in Thailand. It was a positive, uh, I don't know the word. <laughs> yeah. Positive outcome. Yeah. Yes. And the the weather is hot but pleasant, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had to, to accomplish quite a lot of time to, to resist the heat. Yeah, thank okay, you. Very thank much. you. Yeah, thank you.